All right, y'all. Uh, Jason Paul, born legal name, who you know as JTG, one half of Crime Time. Yo, yo, yo. Was on a SoundCloud podcast recently discussing the glass ceiling for certain wrestlers. Basically, the topic of the glass ceiling was racism. Race is a barrier to to being successful in the wrestling industry, according uh, to, to a quote from JTG in an interview he did with World According to Wrestling. In a candid interview, JTG discussed how race is presented in wrestling audiences, his views on Hulk Hogan, his views on Hulk Hogan's comments, uh, etc., and his best moments in the industry. One of the highlights is he was asked, is there a glass ceiling in the wrestling industry? For certain superstars, there is definitely a glass ceiling. Using Zack Ryder as an example, it doesn't matter if the crowd is on your side or you're over with the crowd. If the WWE brass who pr- present that so-called brass ring as Triple Bitch and, and his family always talk about they don't approve, they're not going to put the machine behind you and basically basically you'll be a bit carter slash jobber uh, for life as long as you're there. Or, of course, if you start kissing ass, you'll rise in the ranks too. J- just ask Triple Bitch. He kissed enough He kissed enough ass. He fucked the boss's daughter. And, and technically, he literally fucked his way to the top. Because now he's heir to the throne. But anyway, they're not going to follow through uh, 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 with you as a superstar if you're not handpicked. They handpick their stars. The other question is, is race a barrier in this glass ceiling? JTG says, definitely believe just due to history, he results. You know, all the superstars that have been identified as African Americans have been identified as black. He's never seen a black face as the champion except for TNA and WCW, which I applaud. TNA and both WCW. Ron Simmons for a short time was the WCW World Heavyweight Champion as recently last year. Bobby Lashley with the TNA World Championship uh, uh, for a good while while being a part of the Beatdown Clan. And we can't count The Rock because The Rock is not even... Uh, the Rock is, uh, is just a half-breed. He's not even all black. He's more Samoan on his mother's side. So The Rock, again, doesn't count as a minority or the first black champion. I just believe Vince McMahon and company and a company, which is racist, a racist company, racist family, don't want a black face to market their company. It will always be a white face or, you know, John Cena, whoever, Hulk Hogan, of course. Basically, at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of these highlights, JT, JTG says, a black wrestler is brought in as a monster heel to basically be fed to the white champion. An obstacle he will always overcome. Umaga was brought in and fed to John Cena, as was Kamala fed to Hulk Hogan. And speaking of Kamala, Kamala, a lot of you know, is the one who is now has to use a wheelchair to walk because both of his legs have been amputated due to sugar diabetes. And since Kamala helped Hulk Hogan sell all those good matches he did and make Vince McMahon millions of dollars pay-per-view and house shows-wise, I believe Vince McMahon owes Kamala, as he does countless others, some of that good fortune to, uh, to help them out in their time of need. It's only right and it's only fair, and I've said this before in other, in other videos and in Hangouts. But we all know that Vince doesn't give a shit about a wrestler after, he, after he's used up and, you know, he's released him, you know, and wish well on his future endeavors. He's just out there. Kamala deserves the Hall of Fame and deserves uh, some and deserves uh, some fina- some financial support from the McMahons. I believe all retired wrestlers from uh, from that era, Billy Jack Haynes on down, uh, deserve deserve a piece of the pie and a, a big piece of the pie s- since they helped since they helped Vince become so ridiculously rich, and it's still helped making him rich since you can view all their old, since you can watch all of their old matches on the WWE Network, which is the reason most of us are subscribed to the network, is to watch the old school stuff. So Vince owes them a royalty check every time somebody buys the network and watches their matches. That's how I would set that up if it was me and I had any kind of compassion for guys who 
really need help now who are, who are not doing well health-wise and, and financial-wise. I would set them up in, 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 with an unlimited medical fund uh, to help pay for their medical expenses. So I believe uh, 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 Kamala, you know, Vince would give him, an, I believe Vince owes him a nice little figure, maybe, you know, maybe uh, $5 million, $10 million. That would cover his medical costs, and it would help, and, and it would help him out too. Same thing for Billy Jack Haynes, who recently had a lawsuit against uh, Vince, you know, over the concussion issue, as well as countless others. The family of, of Viscera, who passed away, Vince owes them. First thing he should do is see to it that the family's taken care of uh, for life. You know, Vince owes that. That would show that Vince is actually giving back. He cares. But, hey, wishful thinking. Anyway. Oh, and just and just uh, real quick. When Hulk Hogan made his comments, JT, JT, JTG responded with, what Hulk Hogan did say was very disappointing. He was one of my biggest childhood heroes in the 80s, and to hear him say that, we're all a little racist. You've pretty much sealed your own fate, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. It's still disappointing. I know that he is a loving guy, and he is very positive. I've met Hogan probably like two or three times, and he's already had good spirits about him, but the racism has nothing to do with loving or hating somebody. It is mindset that you are a superior to the other race. Well, JTG learned the hard way, like a lot of fans learn the hard way now. Your so-called childhood heroes aren't who they seem and, and, and what they are. I wish I, I wish I learned that when I was a kid growing up. I know better now, and if I was a kid again, you know, I would try to read more between the lines, but you know, when you're a kid, you don't think about reading or learning or discovering. You're just thinking about playing. Uh, playing with friends, playing video games, etc., 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 or whatever. But as I got older as a teenager, I had a sense about Hogan that he's not who he was. Cause my parents uh, instilled that in me, so I started to sense it even before I was 18. So I kind of learned quickly. The last uh, one of the one of the other highlights in the interview: representations, representations, representations of race in wrestling. JTC says. Uh, he hopefully it changes real soon. JTG, don't hold your tongue. Racism in wrestling will never change. As long as the white man runs wrestling like he does, it will never change. And the black man will always be a secondary or second or third in line, much like, much like in white America uh, today. Yes, we have a black president, but that doesn't change the mentality and the thinking of white America. Anyway, leave your thoughts and comments. I'm the, I'm the Professor Malik. Peace.